Wait, one second. First of all, what is up, everybody? I gotta go pull that thing around behind me because there's a glare in the mirror. Hold on. There, is that better? I don't wanna shine your eyes out. Okay, if you didn't get the memo, this is K-Rail, this is Park City, Utah, and this is my living room. Today, I have got the pleasure of speaking to my good friend, Doug Orchard again. He's a film producer. He has some fantastic documentary films out there. Of the mentioned ones would be The Motivation Factor, Fasting. He's working on a new film on taxes and on fraud and on all these weird things that are happening behind the scenes that affect the economy, all related to health. And we're going to step into that rabbit hole and we're going to talk about that. But before we get there, make sure to go to Pine Pond Superfoods and get the Rebuild Program. Make sure to go outside and roll around in the snow. Yes, snow. Today's April what? 10th. And it's snowing like a son of a gun here. Hey, Chris, how's it going? We got about, I don't know how much, up on the mountain. Six inches, eight inches. We're supposed to get up to 20 inches. Who cares? So what? It's just snow. Get over it. Deal with it. It's weather. Weather comes and goes. Clouds come and go. Cold weather comes and goes. Hot weather comes and goes. And guess what? Happy, sad. Happy, sad. Your mood is just like the weather. Don't forget that. So if you're having a bad day and you're feeling anxious or depressed or angry or anything else, remember, it's old condition patterns resurfacing. It's your computer's attachment to ego that causes all of your problems. Get rid of all of it. Wipe it out. Clean slate. Take your computer down to Best Buy and get it cleaned out of all the junk. Well, do the same thing with your brain. Clear it out of there. Okay? Good. Now, you know how it works. I'm K-Rail. I like to move. I like exercise. I have not missed a day of exercise in about 12 years. It'll be, it'll be 2007 to 2019. It'll be 12 years in October where I have not missed one single day of exercise, a minimum of 30 minutes every single day. So if I can do it, you can do it. I'm wearing street clothes and I'm going to give you a little exercise you can do from your computer desk or from your home office or wherever you are, especially if you're confined to a computer desk for long hours of the day. I highly suggest you do a movement break every two hours. So I'm going to give you one right now and I'm wearing street clothes. So if you're wearing street clothes, you can do the exact same thing. This is going to be a single leg alternating toe touch. Chris Riddell, this one's going to hit home with you. It's going to look familiar. Okay. You ready? You ready? One, two, three. Let's go. Okay. I'm going to move my chair out of the way because I don't want to get cracked with that sucker. Very simple in thought pattern, but not so simple in execution. We're going to stand on our left foot. It's going to be reversed, which you're looking at me. It's going to look like my left foot is in the air, but this is actually my right leg. Okay. Very simple. We're going to take our foot out like this. We're going to put our arms out to our sides or just kind of at our sides. Now, we're going to bring this leg behind us and we're going to touch our toe that's on the floor. Then we're going to come up and we're going to touch this toe coming up in the air. And we're going to alternate back and forth. So we're getting a nice little stretch on our hamstring. We're actually getting our heart rate up a little bit. I'm getting it up more than yours because I'm talking and trying to exercise at the same time, which causes your heart rate to elevate even more. So we're going to go alternating hand to foot. Now by doing this, we're crossing the midline of our body too. So we're getting a little brain refresher. So we're doing a balance challenge, hamstring stretch, and a little bit of muscle contraction also on our hamstring. I touched the floor. I cheated. So do about 10 of these in a row. Focus on keeping your foot grounded. Switch sides. Repeat 10 times. I'm not going to do 10. I'm just going to do a few. Just to show you that I can execute as well as talk at the same time. This is a lot of fun too. And I highly encourage you to take off your shoes. You don't have to wear zebra colored socks like mine, but take off your shoes and put your feet on the ground so your toes can grip and root into the floor. Because if you didn't get the last memo, I'm a minimalist. And I believe in running barefoot and being barefoot or as close to it as much as possible. Okay, now we're gonna all take a deep breath. Ready, here we go. One, two, three. Exhale. Yes. Okay, now we're centered. Now we're ready to roll. I got my ice cold kombucha, black and blue. You might be able to see the wording on there. Where is it? Oh, I didn't write it down. It's black and blue, trust me. That's the name. Okay, hey Troy, how's it going? Let me get Doug in here and we're gonna be off to the races. I might have to turn my camera sideways for a split second here. Absolutely correct. Where's Doug? There he is. Add, add. Okay, the countdown is on. Okay, it's buffering. He's coming in. Wait, I hear Kevin! Noise. Doug! Welcome to the fray, my friend. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I see sunshine and green grass behind you. Dude, I just got back <laughs> to the beach. I got my nice. Indian club right here. Oh, yeah. I love that pattern. That's a good, yeah, that's a good club. Nice. Revolution clubs. Yeah. Yeah. Three pounders. Beautiful. Sweet. In fact, I should show you. 
Let me show you my little stash of these guys real quick. Oh, I'll, please I'll, do. This will work. You so know right here, to... in my little Jeep box that I used to raise my Jeep, I've got my whole, can you see this? Yeah. Yeah, so I got Woo. a whole bunch of them in there. That's why I keep that's, them. That's a great collection. When yeah. I come to visit you, we're going to pull those babies out, every single pair, and we're going to swing them. Yeah, and I also have here um, my homemade gata right here. You've never seen this, but I'll stick this guy right here. Yeah, let's see it. Can you Show see us. the uh, – Mike Reminsky, how are guy. you, my friend? So this is my 25-pounder right here. Got him. Wow, that's, that's nice. Did you leave the, yeah. did you leave the case in yeah. there? Oh. Yeah, I did. You know why? Oh. Why? I like it better. So anyway, uh, no, just, hey, I mean, no I'm not doing it for anyone else, just for me. So. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You can leave them on there as long as they're not shattered. You know, if it's hard plastic or something, that's perfectly fine. Well, I do them on the lawn back there. Uh -huh. So um, that's just – they're not shattering. I mean, I set it down. Just, I mean, I, I have pretty good form by now because you taught me. So. That's, well, I try to teach good things to people. That's all I'm all yeah. out, out there for it. And I'm yeah, filled with your collection, and, and I know. Remember, when you were, I remember when you were telling me when you started making the goddess. You're like, "Oh yeah. my gosh, this one is so heavy and it's so awkward and bulky," and you were telling yeah. me all your stories, and I was laughing. I'm like, "Well, that's the whole idea of the goddess. It's unbalanced, and it goes off to the side, and it, you know, you have to compensate with your core and stuff." So, right, cool, right, yeah, I love that. Something just happened. Love that. Oh, am I good? Okay, now, yeah, there was like a weird sound disturbance. You must have had something okay. in the background. I want to know, I want to know what you got cooking. We were talking shop a little earlier, and Doug has some very interesting information to uh, bestow upon us all today that we're going to talk smack about. Yeah. And yeah, and that was very, you, very. I'm not going to say we're in dire straits. I don't like. I, I don't like to. I, I try not to use negative connotations. My friend Michelle was telling me about it the other day. Sometimes I have a tendency to use well, a word like "not" or "never" or like "never give up." And she was she was telling me, "Don't ever say never give up." She said, "Use something like." always think positive always look forward instead of saying never give up and i went and i raised my eyebrow here i'm like you know that's actually a good that's a, that's a pretty good idea of how to how to word things because what you say has a ability to attract energy to it it's magnetized so you got to be careful on your choice of wording however the choice of wording i'm about to use is pretty frank and direct and to the point and we are let's just say there's a lot of scandal going on out there and there's a lot of things going on that you think are going one way and they're going a completely other way and it's mesmerizing. Doug has the front line to this and we're going to talk about it a little bit more, but I want you to expand on what you texted me this morning a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, first, first with what you're saying, I do not subscribe to the idea that things must go bad. We are all educated people. I mean, we're, we're, we're the, in a lot of ways, the most educated, at least all of us going to school, you know, 60% of the people, if they can't read the proficiency level coming out of high school, but should be able to read something. Um, there yeah. is no excuse why we cannot, as human beings, turn it around. Um, the reason why we're failing to turn it around is because we've lost the fundamentals that enable any civilization to work together. Okay, so the concept of unity of community, okay. the whole purpose of participatory mm -hmm. government, all of that is really dependent on our ability to work together and the desire to work together. And that comes, the reason, that was what the motivation factor documentary demonstrated was yeah. the way nations historically got people united was to get them all on the field together doing the same exercise patterns together. It got them out of their, themselves mm -hmm. thinking and you're part of a group with the heart rate, getting their brains um, back to a chemically balanced mode, all of those things that happen with exercise. And, and um, we see that in, in professional sports teams when, you know, that maybe it was traditionally all Caucasian and then they would have someone who may be African-American participate with them. And suddenly those racial tensions kind of melted away because they were on the same team, a different, a, a common goal. And, and um, right. But if you look at the trend right now, we do not have educated politicians running. We do not. There's, and I'm, and okay, everyone should know right now that I'm actually a registered independent. I have to be for the documentaries I do. I have to kind of leave any political, I, I, there, is no, there is no objectivity. I mean, it doesn't exist. But I try, you know, we, we, we have to try. But I will yeah. tell you that 
I have not, I'm not seeing anybody at the political spectrum right now, the top level, who have demonstrated an understanding of how you unite people. Okay, we don't have anyone like, you know, Abraham Lincoln sitting there right now. In there. We, don't, we don't have it by way of ethics. We mm -hmm. don't have it by way, and I mean across the board. Mm -hmm. So instead what they're doing, most people are doing is a divide and conquer approach. And because it's so difficult to reach all of us, we're siloed. There's a lot you get away with right now, a lot. So I'm just going to talk about the last week, <laughs> just the last week that I've had. Okay, Kevin, nothing that I'm okay. going to talk about I looked for, but uh -huh. in doing a whole other thing that was within the healthcare community, it just kind of came. Now it, I'm it presented I'm, itself to you is what you're saying. Yeah, and, but some of it, happens. but some of it also does go. Over the last year, I did a film that was on the national debt. It it uh, it's been playing in theaters this fall, this past fall, and it still is there right now. It's wrapping up. And um, it's called The Power of Zero. It's going to, on April 23rd, it's going to be online in all those places, in iTunes, whatever. Sweet. So, um, and that's a film about the national debt. And uh, it, for the first time since 2009, we were able to get all the major economists into a documentary. Um, they all escaped um, on the film that, um, back in 2009, um, and, and because one of them were treated badly, they decided they didn't want to participate any longer. So uh, it took a lot of effort to get them into this film. They came in. And the whole point of this is Medicare spending alone is project projected to take up the entire national budget within the next 50 years. All of it. There's no money left. Oh, my gosh. For public education, public school, public anything. <laughs> pub what? Public defense. <laughs> no money to pay for the president of the United States, to pay for the Supreme Court. Nothing. It takes all do, of it. A hundred percent Medicare. Do, do the other countries know about this? Because if they do, that's a perfect time for them to bomb us and take us out completely because we'll have nothing left for military. And, no, yeah, and what you're referring to is to weapons with or like create. You're, what you're referring to is economic, what referring war to? economic warfare. There was a situation when in the early 1970s, the, the sterling the dollar for Great Britain was really the, still the dominant currency. They were really, really strong. And the United States held a lot of those notes. Um, you know, we were, everyone was getting off the gold standard at the time. Nixon had just taken us off. But um, England, what they wanted to do is they wanted, they were dealing with Egypt in a way of the Suez Canal. They wanted to retain control of it. And Egypt wanted access to it and whatever else. And the United States didn't like what England was doing. And they said, would you please let it go, right? And mm -hmm. uh, England said, um, no, no, no can do. <laughs> no so the United, the United States says back to them, well, we're going to dump all the currencies that we are holding in your notes. We're going to dump it all in the market. Your, your valuation of your dollar or sterling note will just plummet. They were out that day. And that's what's called economic warfare. And when you are financially weak, as you, as you can understand, and people <laughs> live yeah. this life, when you're financially weak, you lose that leverage. And there's a lot that happens to you. So that's a, a situation we're going to. But why, Kevin? Why? Why are we, the United States of America, when we only pay for people 65 and older, whatever Medicare covers, I don't know, 62 is med Social Security, whatever it is, I think it's 65. Whatever, you know, when we only pay for just the elderly health care, why, why is our system going to take up the entire national budget? Your guess is good as mine. No, it's not a guess. <laughs> I've, got, unfortunately, I've got a solution. <laughs> not a guess. Okay, before I, uh, do I tell you that? Yeah. Hey, Tamara. I'm just saying hi to Tamara. Okay, so, so this is important for all of us to get because, um, if we don't change the lifestyle habits of us as, as citizens and we don't fix the fraud that's taking place within healthcare, um, we're done. Yeah. We're done. I mean, there is no <laughs> path out. Well, we're done. And that's and then, just so you know, <laughs> that's, it's that's not like right to the point now. That's it's not a doom and gloom. So I talked to the top economists in the United States. I talked to some of the top yeah. academics, the uh, politicians, um, people who used to be, head of the, uh, the uh, base of their nation's chief accountant, the U.S. Controller General. Um, uh -huh. 
all these individuals, and they all said off camera, We're doing they them. sounded more crazy. <laughs> they sounded more crazy than like the crazy blogger stuff that you would read that looks like, whoa, scary stuff. Yeah. These guys sounded more worrisome. They weren't in the next eight years, five to eight years. No one sees a problem um, over the next up to nine years from now. But you know, I paid taxes yesterday and I paid more taxes yeah. than I've ever paid. I bought a big check. And, um, and, and the person says to me, you're lucky you're not writing this check two years ago because your tax rate would be like way higher. And I said, you really? made bring up a good point because that film demonstrated, The Power of Zero demonstrated that tax rates today, the top rate, the actual rate, not you know exemptions and all that stuff, but the top rate is lower. We're at the all time low right now. So you know it started at 7%. Back when it started, uh -huh. 2013, and within four years, it had climbed to 70 percent. It went from seven to 70 percent, and people were like, "Whoa! I never knew it. we used to be at 70 percent." Then it like stayed there and trickled a little bit, and then um, World War II, it climbed again, and it climbed the top rate up to 94 percent. Then it came back down to 70 percent, and it was throughout the 70s. It was at 70 percent. Reagan did the first big honk and chomp. And we are so used to yeah. this tax rate being in the 30s, the top rate, that this idea of 70% seems like, oh, it would never happen. But it actually used to so happen. So are, are you saying that in, like, the individual, if you have a sole proprietorship or business, you're getting taxed on 70% if you're in the higher echelon of income for the year? Is that what you're saying? No, not right now. No, not right now. But historically, know, but that, that was the case. But that is that exactly what, that's what Warren, who's running, Elizabeth Warren, who's running for president, that's what she wants. And that's what you're going to hear. Now? <laughs> yeah, she's ready to do that now. 70%? But, yeah. <laughs> I'll be living in a cardboard box. Well, it's, it's, they're saying it's not going to be Kevin Rowell's tax rate. They're saying this is going to be a tax on the rich. But here's oh, okay. what you've got to understand. You've got to understand something. I was watching 60 Minutes, and they had this billionaire yeah, on of there. Of course, it's going to be the rich. It's not going to be piddly little Kevin Rowell who makes like two bucks an hour. So, <laughs> so. Well, well, here, well, here's the deal. You, this is something that every, all of us need to really get. Okay. Because it's all tied it to it. It's really mm -hmm. tied to it. There's nothing independently on its own little. It's, all, it's always tied together. So um, yeah. a billionaire was on 60 Minutes recently, and he was saying how he wants to see taxes go up and that people like him should pay way, way more taxes. Why would a billionaire be willing to pay 70% tax, Kevin? I want you to, I want you to uh, think about this for a minute. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a word problem. Here's how the word problem is. Let's, okay. let's go with this. Jeff Bezos likes the position he's in, and he's coming up with a strategy of how can he stay the rich and powerful and guarantee that mm -hmm. other people never get there. Kevin Rail, on the other hand, has his new business about ready to come over. He's about ready to explode and start making $250 million a year. How can he keep Kevin down there and stay up there? And the answer, of course, is by 70% tax 70 bracket. Tax? It's, you, you will never oh, be rich oh, oh. at 70%, Kevin. It's, yeah, that's why I said, I, I, so I, said, I, said I, I told you it's dark. It's I finally like, figured out why. That is, like, that is like one level away from insanity, clinical insanity. Dr. Thomas told okay, me that so, a long time ago. He said, everyone is insane. It's just a different level of insanity. And most of the people who are calling the shots in this country, if they got tested, they would be clinically, medically insane. No, they're not insane. And that's exactly what They're not like. insane, Kevin. It's not insanity. Um, it's <laughs> strategy. It's strategy for power and how Power. You, it's ego. It's, it's ego, money then. and power. Well, but, but if you already have and the greed. assets. So if you already have billions of dollars and – no one else can actually get there, then guess what you yeah. get to continue to do, right? I mean, you get, you will always do you extremely well. Have who, all cares the power. If, who cares if 70% yeah. off the top is going down? You're in a better situation. Agreed, yeah. Tony, Greed. Uh, Troy. Yes, Troy's Troy. Right. <laughs> yeah, Word. Troy's right. So, um, so that's what's going on now. Now, <laughs> you, all you'd have to do is think about this also. Okay, so now we're about ready to talk about fraud for a minute, okay? Talk about your fraud. Now, I want everybody okay. to think, just for a minute, you are a fraudster, and you're in prison right Wait, now. can you repeat that? You're, you broke up a little bit. 
Start, okay. Start back when you said fraud, right after fraud. Let's say, let's say you're a fraudster. I mean, you're okay, a guy fraud. who just wants to make money through fraud somehow. That's just, you're wired that way. Yeah. And you're in prison and you're about ready to come out. Yeah, well, Amazon Try. doesn't pay tax. Well, he's oper- that's because they're operating right now under the current tax thing, which benefits them tremendously. But if we were to change that so that only the rich would have to pay, that would also put a ceiling on it climbing up. And I'm just telling you, you've got to understand that those who are making decisions right now, um, ethics is gone. I do not trust <laughs> anyone. And I'm going to lay out several I was things talking for about, everybody right now. I just, told, I just told Mark Testa those exact words this morning. I trust no one anymore. I think I trust someone. I give my, my heart and life to somebody. And then they stab me in the chest. And they stab me in the back. And they lie to me. And they, I, I think they're telling me the truth about something, about health or fitness or wellness or this stuff under that. I do a little weird research. I go in the weeds, and they're connected to scoundrelous people or something like that. And everyone is, like, scandalous anymore. And it breaks well, my heart. I feel so lonely. <laughs> I'm interviewing for my next film. I don't know what to do. Um, I don't know, eight, eight or nine billionaires for my next film. And, and if I said the names, you'd recognize almost every single one of them really, really well. I'm sure I would. And, and – um, mm-hmm. And I, I, you can't get there and be able to get those interviews and do that if you're operating unethically. You know, um, I've been I've benefited tremendously by just laying things out there. Is nobody who I've ever interviewed who said who said <laughs> Troy is the last the last honest one left. All right, Troy. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it might be the case. You got uh, two of them right here. So there's three of us. <laughs> well, I, I what I I'm reading a great book right now called. Uh, um, the truth about dis about dishonesty. Um, that's not even the title. I'll have to come back. I'll think about it in a minute. But the bottom line, let's get back to what we're talking about. Okay, sounds so like a good title. You want? Yeah, you're you talking wanna, about fraudsters. You want to defraud people? Well, how do you do it? Oh, the honest truth about dishonesty. I, Somebody just opened the door and told oh, thanks, me they must thanks, be listening Caleb. to me. Thank you, Caleb. <laughs> the it honest like truth Caleb. about dishonesty. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, it's a must read. Not tied to this person. There's nothing. You know, Everybody needs to watch that, read that book, The Honest Truth About Dishonesty. It will really help you understand um, a lot of the things we're about ready to discuss about okay. what is going on right now in healthcare. If you want to defraud people and you're in prison and you're trying to decide what to do, and, and by the way, I'm not just making this up. This is a story of someone <laughs> I've been filming, okay, that, I, that I'm covering and have oh been for a while. God. Well, nobody decides I'm going to go create – I'm going to go start defrauding people working in the public library. No one's going to go, I'm going to go get a master's of library science, which is what I did, and decide I want to go use that and leverage it so I can just defraud people. You would go after an industry where the money's at. You don't go after library, right? You would choose an <laughs> yeah. industry where there's money. Yeah. Health. Yeah. Health. Ah, Health. Yes. It's all That's making where it sense is now. Yeah. So, so you just say, oh, what do you want to do? I, I'm going to go, I want to be a doctor. Why do you want to be a doctor? Okay, I've been asking this question to a lot of them. Why did they want to be a doctor? Well, because they make money. So now you're a doctor. You have $250,000, $300,000 of debt. Uh, everyone's <laughs> telling you, here's how life's going to work. You have a credit lifestyle. And you are not making anything which you thought you were going to make. Sales rep walks in, tells you about a new thing. And that new thing is whatever, or hey, Embrel. Embrel. Maybe, uh, uh, Kevin, the stories are so crazy; they sell out as bad as anybody. So, so here's the bottom line. Okay, here's CNBC just covered this story. Um, Walmart sent over somebody um, for a second opinion for spine. If they have a spine surgery, they sent them hey, uh, to. They sent them to somewhere they trusted for a second opinion, and uh, they tested the person out. Mm-hmm. And they dis- discovered the person didn't need spine surgery. What their problem okay. was is they had Parkinson's disease. Wow. The spine surgeon looked, ah, I think I can fix whatever this guy's problem is because I do spine surgery or the spine surgery. So Walmart saved a crazy amount of money. Walmart found that 50%, Kevin, 50% out of, out of all the cases they've done, all right, out of 2,000 cases, 50%. Do not need spine surgery. Half of it is absolute class A fraud. 35 35 to 40% of cancer patients 
did not have cancer. There's a third of the people in the United all? States of America. Kevin, there's a third of the people who are taking chemo right now in the United States that don't even have cancer right now. Are you kidding me? This is my they, next documentary. This is my next documentary. They bamboozle people that much to make them believe it? There, is, not, no, there is no feedback loop to tell otherwise. You're right. There's none. Who are they to question your doctors, right? Who are you to question your doctor? Well, the, the, so everybody listening right now, if you have a friend, you just got diagnosed for cancer, you go to the Cleveland Clinic, you go to the Mayo Clinic, you go somewhere where the physicians are paid in a way that's not based on doing more work. Okay, they're a salaried physician. They're part of a team-based approach. You get a full diagnosis all over again and see if you even have it in the first place. So um, the biggest corporations in the world are seeking second opinions now. I'm filming all of them. And it's a really ugly thing. It's a really disturbing thing. And um, we could probably look at, okay, so one of the CEOs I filmed, are you still there? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> your mouth was a movie. I was like, did he freeze? Okay. No. So I, I'm, so, I'm frozen by, what, <laughs> by your words. <laughs> I know it takes a lot to shut me up, but I'm like, I'm, so I'm, I filmed, I filmed a CEO already um, of, a, of a major corporation, and he said- A pharmaceutical corporation? No, 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 of a major that? Fortune 500, Fortune 100 company. Oh, okay, okay. And, okay. and um, when he took over as CEO back in 2006, healthcare spending was going up 15% per year. Today, it's going 4.5% per year. He got there by doing basically three things, focusing on- wellness not the corporate way time out ping pong balls yes hold so back in what year was this again he started in 2006 so in 2006 to present. the healthcare industry the healthcare crisis was going up 15 percent per year then and now it's 4.5 percent no 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 that's what his corporation was going up per year that is what's going up per year for for most huh for for his company so his company the healthcare was going up 15 percent per year Starting yeah, the, the average corp today is, is about a, it's pushing about 9% right now. It's about 9% okay, so, per year. All right. But his so was 15 the, so you were and he's got point. it down to four and a half percent by focusing on fundamentals, right? Exercise. Oh, yes. Exercise. Yes. Getting people to try to be healthy. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. And, um, and I filmed all these people, you know, in their environment, what they're doing. He uh, got there by doing second opinions so that when people are having a problem, uh, they are only paying for diagnoses that are real mm -hmm. because 80% of the healthcare costs are being gobbled up by just 6% of the employees. Wow. And if, yeah. half, and if, that... if, if uh, 30 to 50% of those are actually not even legitimate diagnoses, then you can save a lot of money right oh, there. Oh, boy. Oh, look at, this. look at how the concentric web of we, uh, the web is being woven. Right so there. that's that's corporations. That's so corporations have had enough because they pay their own bills. So okay. why during that time period haven't we seen the same thing happen with Medicare? You know, the part that our tax dollars are going to. Right. Well, um, they've tried. And every time they do, a, a representative will show up and say, you're trying to sanction that hospital in my district. I won't approve funding next time you need approval. So Medicare hasn't sanctioned any hospital. They haven't changed anything. Where groups like uh, uh, Walmart and stuff like that and GE and Lowe's and, and uh, Boeing, they will only send their stuff to just 4% of the hospitals out there. That's it. No one else. Wow. wow. No one else. So um, my healthcare, by the way, I use a company called HealthShare, which isn't an insurance company oh, yeah. at all, but a health You're share plan. You were telling me about that. It sounds interesting. Yes. So for my family, for me and my family, my kids, everybody, we pay a total of $499 a month with a $1,500 wow. per year annual deductible. After that, 100% is covered with no network. I get to go anywhere I dang well feel I choose. But here's, I have to covenant with them and say, commit, hey, I am a healthy guy. So I don't. I don't smoke. I, they, they use the phrase drink alcohol the way the Bible suggests. So it sounds like it's very minimal. I don't drink at all. But uh, so I qualify there. I have to have some religion in my life, you know. So I, and I do. Um, mm -hmm. 
and they have some basic lifestyle things, which I'm telling you, most of your audience probably qualifies. You absolutely would qualify. Uh, most people would qualify for this. We are people who focus on health and interested in health. We shouldn't have to pay with everyone who doesn't. So this is a group. Uh, agreed. This, this is a group I'm going to go. I'm so biblical. Pay, Amen. I, I pay for less than, <laughs> I less, pay less than 500 bucks a month. Wow. For a family of what, five, is it? Yes. All wow. in health care. And, um, and uh, we go to anywhere we want. I can go to the Mayo Clinic. I can go anywhere. My first point, I go anywhere I want to go. So it's called HealthShare. There's a lot of other wow. companies that are like this. They're not the only one. But if you're a healthy person, uh -huh. if you're not, ignore this. Stick with your HMOs and everything else. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but if you're, Let's just call if like you're a healthy heads, person right? who it's never going to be used, who never going to have to really use it like me, I don't plan to ever. I'm not going to tell you where. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to have a health problem. I'm not going to have diabetes. I'm not going to have no. heart disease. I'm not going to have any of those things. Not a chance. Because I follow what you tell me to do for eating, and I exercise, you know, and like you tell me to do, and it's great. I don't have that problem. Okay. So anyway, get, let's get That's back to, good to a, a little bit more of the fraud stuff. Okay, so if you look up right now, LA Times, LA, Time, LA is covering a big, a big story by the former head of orthopedic surgeries department. This is the guy who headed up UCLA's orthopedics department okay surgery department mm -hmm. he back in 2009 uh, when he was department head saw some serious conflicts of interest where a doctor was being 200 being paid two hundred fifty thousand dollar consulting fee to to medtronics you know medical device group mm -hmm. and and all these kinds of things and he says look at that's going to cloud judgment you can't take Dude. that kind of money and then do procedures with these products on patients. That's not in the best interest of patients. That's a conflict of interest. That's going to cloud your judgment. And he mm -hmm. was seeing that stuff everywhere at UCLA. And UCLA, wow. UCLA ended up pretty soon. He's not the department head. He's not the chairman. He had, a, as part of a settlement, agreed to let that go. And they paid him $10 million to just kind of let the whole thing go away. And he just came out on it. Oh, yeah. Whew. Oh, yeah. Meanwhile, what? Massachusetts, just the, st the state, just went after three pharmaceutical companies. Three. Here's what they've been doing. Medicare, as you know, um, mm -hmm. uh, Obama has a sunshine law thing where the, it was you were not as a drug company allowed to give kickbacks, reimbursements, anything to, to a person who's buying your drugs. Why? Because they wanted some market force at play. To, in an effort to keep a lid on the cost of health care, on, 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 on pharmaceutical costs. But we've all seen pharmaceutical costs going through the roof, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Through the roof. So one of the companies, they started a foundation, a not-for-profit -for foundation, where they funneled a whole bunch of money, and it only reimbursed for their drugs to patients who needed some financial assistance for their co-pays for their drugs. And during that time period, from 2014 to 2018, they raised their prices 24 times the rate of inflation. And so the <laughs> government went after them and said, oh, no, you don't. And do, you know, do you know how many people had to serve, go, get sentenced to prison for that? Hopefully thousands. Zero? They had to give back a little bit of money. I mean, millions, but not Millions not is nothing. nothing. Millions like, is like, it's one, like Monsanto. One of the it's like Monsanto they, saying, here's $2 million to shut your mouth. That's like nothing for them. It's a speck of dust, like five cents. One of us. the companies have products that cost, their, their treatment for it costs 500000 a year. Yes. I mean, Kevin, you can't even make this stuff up. How does this happen? Well, well Medicare can't, you know. So the, what, what I'm saying is this, is we have doctors who are getting all of their, the most, I would say, some percentage of the physicians are getting 100%. 99 to 100% of all their continuous education from sales reps of medical devices and pharmaceutical products, okay? They're getting it from the sales reps coming through the door, and they're handing them, these sales reps are right. handing them um, these, uh, these uh, studies done at the university level on their products saying why this is a good thing. Well, at, who funded all those which, studies? Exactly. Who funded those studies? <laughs> those were grants that the, I mean, if you understand the academic world, I mean, we've got to have someone here that, that really does, you know, yeah, you can do things on your own dime, 
but you know you really need to get a grant that's what it's all yeah. about and when you're mm -hmm. a professor you get grants so you get the grants you do the study well this is a conflict of interest i mean everybody knows that if this is the what's paying you you know you just don't bite that hand so um yeah. this is the and issue that's that's why i'm super super skeptical of studies that people shove in my face is when they're trying to push an agenda on me or tell me about this try this new supplement and, and it's it's studied and it's on the stock market and it's blah blah, blah and they sh shove a study in my face and it says blah 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 and then at the bottom i and fine print commissioned by the coca-cola industry or something and i raise my eyebrow I'm like, well if they if they actually had it there that? if they actually disclosed it that's amazing but the problem is most paid platforms they don't at the at where the doctors are going for on this conference it has someone up there. It was a paid deal to get up there, but it's not disclosed as such. Or they'll have a, a professor up there talking about a study that was paid for by the same group that's just sitting out there in the in the event, you know, thing where they with a big booth. So, so the point is, mm -hmm. it's bought. It's bought, and we're not doing a very good job of disclosing that it's bought. But it's bought. Mm -hmm. Now, that is right. traditional medicine. All right. So now let's look at the natural path side. All right, which also this is this is your chiropractors, your naturopaths, your your just yeah. you know your your body hackers. You know this is this is biohacks, yeah. Biohacks. This is what what some news would call fake news. That whole side of things. Okay, well, where are we there? Because we know that that was the only voice for a long time against the the fraud that we were seeing in traditional medicine. Right. Let's just be honest. That was the only voice. Yeah. That's how we got things out going. And now we're seeing crazy censure stuff going on that's really interesting by the major platforms, by Facebook, by, you know, Pinterest, and by a whole Instagram. bunch of other Instagram. Yeah, yeah uh, Amazon's that. pulling titles. I have a film coming out that I don't think they're going to post and allow to be out there that will come out by, by one on this summer, my big, big one, but which I'm even talking about that one yet. So, so, um, so, so let's talk about this natural side for a minute because – just because I, I'm going to yeah. interrupt you for one second. I think where Doug is about to go, folks, get some, well, yeah, get some popcorn ready because it's still early in the afternoon. You could eat popcorn because your pancreas is going to release insulin and sit down and pay very close attention if you haven't paid attention so far because I know where he's going with this, I think. And all I'm going to say before you start is what once was a good thing and was started out with a noble purpose and cause has gotten derailed. Am I right? Yeah. Is that where yeah. you're going? Yeah, it has. Let me give an example of what's happening in the natural side of things, okay? The body hacker side, the blogger side, the side that we, that a lot of us were looking to. to and trusted, okay? Really, honestly, we trusted, because what, what they will do is they will point out the problems of the other side, and then they'll say, oh, and here you go, and you're trusting them. So there'll be a docu-series that will come out, and the docu-series, a bunch of the people in there will, be, will have paid to be in this docu-series, the docu-series will have a lot of people who are bad actors, currently bad actors by the FDA, <laughs> that they've sued, that people have gone blind from their products or had serious health problems. I mean, we're talking about bad people. We're not talking about, you know, all oh, these are noble. No, these are just people who are defrauding people. Oh, They're wow. showing up in these docu-series as experts, okay? And then, and then they mean, give, yeah. the, the docu-series are getting promoted by these major bloggers all through the internet. And which the major bloggers are taking half of all the proceeds of their referral code. They get half the money. <sighs> and, and we're talking from the really people who are bloggers or whatever, and they, they, uh, they currently work at the Cleveland Clinic or people in functional medicine or people who, you know, huge followings, millions of followers, huge, the biggest ones, okay? Mm -hmm. And they're promoting these docuseries, know that they're getting half the money and know that there is absolutely – nobody doing quality control. And if you just went through and actually just Googled some of the people that are in the film, you're going to see a lot of these people actually have served time in prison. You're going to see oh a lot of these people are um, absolute, uh, have been convicted for fraud in other places. You're going to see that they don't carry any degrees. Sometimes they, they say that's all out there. You're going to mm -hmm. see craziest stuff. And you're like, how'd that person even get into the film? Kevin, I haven't had anybody <laughs> on any of my films ever criticized. Not one. All right. It's not that hard. I first, just... you just Google the person. <laughs> and if the first line that comes up is, here's this letter, this lawsuit from the FDA about this thing to this person, that should be a little bit of a red flag, right? Yeah, you so, would think, right? 
So, so it's, uh, it, it, it's, I can sum it up in three words. Just like we've talked about in the past about fasting. Wild, wild west, baby. Wild, yeah. wild west. It's, well, that, it's, that's it's what it has a, become. We have one crisis in America, and it's a crisis of ethics. Yes. Yes. Everything else is more. a consequence of it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's so, astonishing. It's so like, what, what, what we learned in Sunday school, turns out, was actually kind of important for society to operate. I mean, Kevin, if you can't trust somebody, you know, in the, in the 90s, in 1995, I made more placements in technology than in tech recruiting than anyone else did. I used to be a headhunter. That's where right. how I actually got to know how to interview people and learn a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, had a, I had a client, Shell, I should probably should, oh, who do I care? I can sue me. Shell, um, Shell actually did a consulting. You know, we think of them as the, the gas station company, but it's a huge company. Mm -hmm. They did major SAP consulting. And I had a contract mm -hmm. with them that if I placed somebody with them, they would pay me 30% or 25% fee of the guy's annual thing. That was the deal. Okay. So I gave them a person. Person went in, had the interview, gets the job, at which then he calls me. I just got a weirdest phone call from the HR department at Shell. What was that? They want me to upload my resume on the internet and say that they found me without you. Why they were trying to screw you out of your commission? So I call them. I said, my client just <laughs> called and said this. And they go, well, I go, we have a contract. Well, we see that, uh, I mean, you're not going to have the money to really sue us, and you're not going to do this, and, and we see a way we get around this. And so I go, I well, so I called the client. I mean, I called my, the guy, and I let him know what happened, and he called him up and said, I'm not taking the job. Um, and it was really interesting, because why would he want to work somewhere where he, he could see how they treat people? Yeah, it was but already this, sketchy and slippery salesmanship, or whatever you want to call it, starting. So they were trying to they were trying to cut you out of the commission. Is that what it was? Oh, yeah. And say oh, yeah. that he just like randomly oh, yeah. just even though they had a out. contract and even though it was all documented and everything else. And it was it was shocking to me to see how blatant I hadn't seen someone that blatant before. So Kevin, wow. it's it's always been bad, but I've never seen it worse. And it's worse always where the most money's at. And where is all the money right now? Healthcare. Okay. Okay. In the FDA, Sick the care. FDA. FDA controls one third of the U.S. economy. One third. So, Kevin, I, you, you you can't tell me that's a clean company. I mean, it, it, there's there's oh, going to be some problems in there. Um, you got you got power. eight healthcare loans, eighteen percent of the GDP. Okay, so if you're going to be a fraudster, if you're going to take advantage of things, that's the place to go. Um, most insurance companies are paid cost plus, so they don't care. They're not going to mm -hmm. really try to ratchet things down. And um, and so if we're in a situation that we're going to our doctor and we're going to them because we want advice so we can be healthy and active and live a great life. We need to have our eyes wide open and whatever they say, we need to go check that, triple check it. Um, but ideally, if it's if he's coming yeah. back and saying there's something major, you absolutely need to go to a, a center of excellence, a true one that's not, that doesn't have the cost, mm -hmm. you know, and, and pay the money as expensive as it might be, mm -hmm. and because it's, it's, it's outrageous. But more importantly, just don't get sick. I mean, we really want to stay healthy. <laughs> you, we, we want to stay healthy. You just said they're done. But, but, but the, the advancements in, in literally all natural remedies these days, including fasting and intermittent fasting and time-restricted eating and not eating at night. Like, Doug, if people, if everyone in the whole world just listened to you and me for a year, that, that the number like is like pointed this way like this, it would go like this, like that, like one third of the direction this way in the opposite direction. The billion dollar, bazillion dollar healthcare crisis would go that direction, one third of the way in a year and two, in two or three years it'd be gone. I mean, I started one of these yeah. videos with a movement break because I'm trying to inspire people to get out of your chairs in the middle of the afternoon and move just for five minutes or two minutes or 30 seconds and do that every couple hours throughout the day. And it could be that simple. That's so, th you know, you talked about that guy with the corporation that took his 15% increase down to 4.5% increase in healthcare at his company, at his huge company. If one of those dudes would just reach out to me, I could cut that thing off completely. They need, they need qualified, honest, legitimate health and fitness and, health and healthcare industry moguls in their businesses, in their pipelines. And it's people like me that have those skills and knowledge. And it makes me mad that there's so much corruption going on. And I'm not sitting here saying, oh, look, at, you know, I'm the greatest in the world. What I'm saying is, I know, this, I know the situation. I'm in the weeds and I know what's going on out there and I can help so many people 
with a wave of a magic wand that it's not even funny. But yet I have to sit here and watch all these people pass me by and watch the healthcare industry get spiraling out of control with all these people on top and crooked doctors and crooked healthcare care practitioners and crooked chiropractors and crooked naturopaths making all the money, calling all the shots, being the bullies they are. And I have to sit idly by and scrape by every single month. And it drives me crazy. And I'm sorry to go on a rant about that, but it's the absolute truth. And then I get looked down upon by people and I get overlooked because, oh, he's struggling to survive. He must not be anything great or anything like that. But I promise you, I'm gonna look you right straight in the eye, all of you out there. I got skills that are knock your socks off that you don't even know about. I just need two seconds of everybody's time and that's all I ask. But I didn't mean to interrupt you, but go ahead, keep going. Well, uh, I will absolutely uh, go to bat here, Kevin. You absolutely do. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you know, you get my texts, you get my questions, you get all this stuff. And I could text anybody. In this, I mean, most people who are head of the largest <laughs> healthcare companies, everything else in, in universities. But you get those late night things from me, which aren't that late because I'm in Florida and you're in Utah. So. <laughs> That's true. But, um, you my, my, my hotline is always open, Doug. It doesn't matter. If, my, if really, I don't want my phone on, it won't be on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so anyway, that's, that's kind of what I think that's uh, – yeah, that's what I want to share. Now, those, those are the, the main issues right now that we're looking at. Um, we have a, a, a crisis on our hands because we aren't doing the basics. These are lifestyle basics. Mm -hmm. we're, so so basics. here's a challenge. It's all, I everybody should it think always, about. Comes, it yeah. always comes back to that, right? Yes. The basics. Yeah, I, I, would, I would like everybody – yeah, Kevin, you are the man. Troy, he's validating this. Yeah. Um, That's so, good to hear, Troy. So, I appreciate um, that. Thank you. So here's a challenge I get. I You're would like everybody to kind of think yeah. about, just picture someone historically, a long time ago, 500 years ago. Thanks, Joe. 1,000 uh -huh. years ago. 500 years ago, 1,000 years ago, uh, even, even London in, in uh, 1850, because those people were living longer. The men then were living longer than we do today in America. So, um, and all this crap that wow, we that's keep hearing about. Yeah, yeah, it is interesting, isn't it? <laughs> it's very, it's very interesting. interesting. Now, now, to get to that statistic in fairness, they had, they, that's assuming, that's, that's anybody who happened to be age, reach age five. If you've reached age five moving forward, you live three years longer than men in America do right now. They didn't have any retirement. They had to walk six miles to and from work. They had to work all day. And they had the equivalent of organic wow. food being, being railed in because the rails just came in for the first time. And there was no commercialization of food till 1875. Railed in. <laughs> yes, railed in. <laughs> so anyway. Um, You've just so been, yeah, so whoever survives one of my six pack classes just got railed, yes. by the way. Depends. So, so the bottom right, line is, ask the question, how did they live? When did they go to bed? Mm -hmm. And try that. Just decide, when did somebody who was a farmer live down in the middle of wherever, what time did they go to bed? You're breaking up. You're turning into a robot. Sorry, repeat that, that better? Repeat that last sentence. Okay. Um, Am I still you're there? You're breaking up, Doug. Can you back, yeah. back up? Yeah, you're there. So, you just broke up a so little bit. Just, just people way, 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 way back in the day, before electricity, um, they worked their heads off all day. They went to bed when the sun went yeah, down. Yeah. They usually read for, you know, Bible or something for a nanosecond. It's the only thing they had. Um, and then went to sleep. They got up before the sun came up. They were up. They did not eat. They went out and worked, milked cows, did whatever, till about eight in the morning. Then they had a monster breakfast, then a really huge lunch, and then they had a light supper before it's dark and then they did it all over again and they did that all they did all until the day they died minus the breakfast that sounds very similar to, to my style of living right now <laughs> Kevin, if, they, if you're up at four in the morning and you're not eating until eight in the morning i'm not until four, 11 usually but you're not but but the thing is that's time restricted eating that's right, validated a, with circadian rhythm it's it, it was all there yeah it's at least a one hour gap gap after you wake up in the morning which is how the, many the times do they goal. eat out how many times do they eat out how many Probably times do those people – Once a never. year, maybe. No. <laughs> there was nowhere to go eat out. There was nothing. Did they, they even have they, restaurants? They ate out zero their entire life. <laughs> oh there my was God. no eating out. There was no processed anything. Yeah. It was just – so the point is, it's really not that complex. It's the basics. Right there, it's back to the basics. There wasn't so, a – they didn't have one of those, those fancy pill boxes that are like a foot long with like 17 pills in them and supplements. 
well, this is my omega-3, this is my B vitamin, this is my vitamin C, this is my multi, um, this is for antidepressant here, depression there. This one's to counterbalance the side effects from the antidepressant drug. This one's for high blood pressure. This one's for cholesterol. And this one's for dementia. I'm good okay, to go. So, I have all these so this, three times you just, you just brought up what is the issue to me. And that yeah. is there's such a weird focus on the supplement of the day, the, the <laughs> particular food of the day, or this or this or this. It's all being sold by the person writing the article or, or they're funding someone to write the article, okay? It's just, guys... It's just, these are infomercials. That's what they are. Yeah. Nobody, I do film. Have you ever seen me do a documentary on vitamin B? I mean, you know, nobody's going to do that movie. You wouldn't do it. The, it, it it's, it's pretty obvious stuff. You just look at this thing and you should know mm -hmm. as intelligent people, why is that article being written? Why is it a paid why is it getting sponsored? Advertise, Why is it getting it's a paid boosted? advertisement? How's yeah. this going out? And and um and so all those huge bloggers who are getting money off the documentaries that they're promoting, the docu series, which are fake things, okay? Snake oil. Called. Thank, Thank you, you very Mike. much. <laughs> Absolutely, Mike. Mike. Yeah, he's nailed it. Yeah. Well, exactly. I mean, and, and I'm not saying that some of these things don't have value, right? And I'm not saying also yeah. that there aren't really amazing doctors that you should be should trust. Oh well, yeah, yeah. Because because like like uh like okay, so the Cleveland Clinic. If you go to Cleveland Clinic, you get diagnosed for spine problem. And then you go over to Mayo Clinic and do the same thing. You've got a 99.5% track record that whatever they diagnose at one place will be validated at the other. But that's not the case if you go to your own local doc and then go to them. Okay, you got about a 60% chance that it's going to be validated. 40% of the time, you don't have it, what they say you got. So you're saying the local doctor is going to be the snake oil salesman or the Cleveland Clinic is going to be the snake oil 96, salesman? 96 percent of all of them in America would be the snake oil guys. The guys that will falsely diagnose you for one reason or the other. Either they are don't they don't have the valid competency. They, they read it. There's no feedback loop to demonstrate otherwise. And again, that means 60 percent of them are totally legit. Right. Mm -hmm. But 30 to 40 percent of them are a huge problem. Now, we know in police well, that's, that we that's a huge percentage, though. That's no, one of every not. three it's, doctors. Oh, Kevin, no? what percentage of our population? Oh, have we not noticed like the university thing that just happened recently? You know, those people lying and cheating to get into college, right? All those people. Um, no, you know, for their kids. I don't, I don't pay attention to the news. Oh, yeah, okay. I don't pay attention. Well, we'll talk about but that offline because your people, well, there were, there were like okay. actresses and big time popular rich people who were paying other people to take like the, 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 the entrance exams for their kids. They were, oh. everything was fake. Everything was fake, oh all God. made up, huge fraudster stuff. Well, that's, that shouldn't be a surprise. We got, we got other issues. We got a lot of fraud what? issues going on. Well, yeah, I, nothing surprised me these days. But why would you even want to force your kids through college like that? If they're not going to legitimately get a degree in stuff and show the competencies, once they get the diploma, what are they expected? They, they're going to get a job doing something they didn't do uh, lift a finger to learn about? It's like Kevin, not even useful. what's the lesson you gave to your kid? I mean, just the yeah, lesson. Fraud is okay. <laughs> what <laughs> is that about? What right? is that about? That's CPS. Come take the kid away. That's horrible. <laughs> I mean, that's just, I mean, and why could that? So, so here's the question, Kevin. How much jail time are they going to get? Well, they should have got 20 years or maybe at least 10, <laughs> but they just, <laughs> they gonna, just, they just did a settlement. You. They, they just much. said it did a plea bargain in which they're going to get most likely less than six months. <sighs> But at least they're going to get That's something. Ridiculous. Probably, probably community service for some of them. But, um, no but the, uh, I, the, the, like I said, those pharmaceutical companies that are doing that stuff, no prison time. The doctors who are doing all these other things, that's safe harbor, no prison time. Yeah, you can tell me a lot of personal experiences. Mike, wow. Yeah. Yeah, I've, 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 had, I've had my own issue. You know, I, mean, I can't talk about the own family. But the, I got into this whole thing because of a monster problem with my daughter. And I will tell you, when you have to live with the consequence of it and you watch what happens when, when one doc just goes back and you trust these people. And this is, what's, this is what hurts. And we're, we're saying healthcare, you know, it's any industry, you're going to see more of it in any industry where there's money. That's all we need to understand. So I'm saying 30, 40%. That's not a big number. That's not a big number. Um, you got 25% that are bad actors in the police force, typically. And, um, you mm -hmm. know, so... so there's not a lot of money there. 
So, and in politics, the government, where there's a lot of money, okay, so not a big surprise. <laughs> we have higher percentages there too, right? Um, so all you have to do yeah. is say, where's the big money? And then you'll know what's going on. I mean, you know. Where the big corruption lies. Yeah. Big yeah. money, big corruption. It's that simple. Yeah. Boy, I, this is just like. Sorry, that, that didn't mean that. I told you it's going to be dark today. I, it's a I little dark. Wanna, yeah. I don't, I don't want to believe anything we talked about today. But I, I do believe all of it. Oh, and Kevin. Kevin, this isn't. I, I'm, not, I'm not going into heart crazy stuff. This is the everything. Okay. What I just mentioned, those numbers. Yeah. Wall Street Journal last week's covering it. Okay, the whole Walmart thing. Uh, Harvard Business Review covered it in 2017. Um, monster study. These are like the most open academia, open source discussions it could possibly be. This is not fringe in one little closed group website, you know, or, or, or chat on Facebook or something like that. This is completely validated, which is all I do for the films I'm doing. I just want it really open. I have the FDA in the film I'm doing right now. Um, Actually, mm -hmm. they're not going to actually get in the film. They emailed me last night. They're going to actually, they said that they're going to answer the questions in writing, which I was like, okay, I'll take it. I'll take what I can get. <laughs> Better than nothing. Um, yeah. You get their word on it. Uh, hey, you could say it. FDA yeah, claims. The yeah. FDA, as, as, and I've, I, the, the FDA, yes, there's going to be some issues, but the FDA, we have to have the FDA, guys. The FDA um, is a s seriously important organization. What we need is to put the right pressure and to keep it all honest, ethical, everywhere that we go. We have to have honesty in America. We have to be honest people. We need to individually reflect and say, you know, I have some situations where my opinion is being compromised or my work is being compromised because I'm financially getting benefit here. I mean, these are, these are different questions. So we need to do this ourselves. With those so we need to clean up our act in this country. We clean that up everything else is going to self-correct. We will never be able to chase the fraud that's going on. We can never fix it that way. We got to, we got to fix it internally right now ourselves. Um, I that? think it all starts. Yeah. Just like we said a long time ago, one pull up at a time. Yeah. I use that example of all that things I talk to people about when they give me this big, long, complicated, you know, parabola about why they can't get in shape or why they can't exercise and they got this going on that and I said it all starts with one thing and I say what and I go one pull up at a time and I have to give my friend Jen Eslick props on this because she she uh, happily sent me a text message yesterday and said you're not gonna believe what happened today and I said you got engaged and she's like she said ha 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 no she's like I, I did a full pull up for the first time in I can't remember how many years she said I've been working on it for X amount of years she said I'm so excited I'm gonna start integrating in my workouts and I could just feel the energy from her text message. And I was stoked when I heard about it because Jen is, Janine is a good friend of mine. She used to live in Park City. You might, I think you met her at, at Ron's when we were out there a few years ago at a picnic. She had short blonde hair. I don't know if you remember. The bottom line is I love hearing success stories like that from people. Doug said before, stick with the basics. Make a goal. Make a simple goal. Lose five pounds in a year. Do one pull up at this time next year. And then work at it. And yeah, practice and I, every I, single day. My, my advice is take a break from the whole look thing. Let's get away from how we looked just for a little bit. Um, take a vacation from how you look. Instead, focus on how you feel. Focus on your posture. Focus on how it's making you walk better and run better and on all those other activities and, and, and your vision stretching. Remember, I took three years off all exercise to do nothing but restorative arts, Kevin. And that's what corrected my spine, so I didn't have to have spine surgery. That I fixed remember. my frozen shoulder. Mm -hmm. Didn't have to deal with that. There was all kinds of issues. Mm -hmm. Now I can do anything I want because I, I, I got yeah. fixed. Fixed. Not, I didn't take yes. pills. I didn't yes. take drugs. I, I didn't – none of that nonsense. I got, I got posturally corrected because I could. I, I did it early enough, and I didn't have an injury. So, yeah. Hey, thanks very much, Mike. Thanks for tuning in, Mike. I'm coming up to visit got, you in, in Idaho. Stay tuned. By the way, I got to I got to go run, too, because I'm supposed to be editing a movie right now. That's that's really behind. It's oh. got to go through the Motion Picture Association <laughs> on the 23rd. It's supposed to be from oh, Motion boy, Picture on the right. 23rd of May. And, and what has to happen between now and then? Dude, I'm still going through all the footage for the first time. I mean, like, you think on the timeline, my, my film guy, my music store, they are saying, well, where is this? We need like a month on it. Oh, you could probably do it faster than that. I mean, I got all these people waiting and it's still... I'm still going through the footage. It is just, I had 52 Plus, interviews and they're like, 
hours each, and I just it's just taking forever. Oh. Well, so all I, I ask is make sure make sure when I rear my face into town uh, a month and a half from now, you're ready to roll with our our thing. I got that storyboard done, so let's get yeah. that thing in motion, man. Yeah, that thing's looking really really cool. Kevin's got a film cool, that cool. really. What I what I like about I like stuff that has some unique factor, um, that explores a whole new. It's different angle. It's just different. Why does it have to be different? Well, we got to wake up people. They're sitting down when they're watching stuff in the first place. So get their attention. <laughs> stuff definitely does that. <laughs> oh, it's going to get it's people's awesome. attention. I, prom I yeah, promise you that. It's got some serious comedic factor and interesting and just, wow, it'll be very fun. Yeah. Yeah, I'm super stoked. Cool. Yeah, so, I just ordered a new cinema camera yeah. and all this gear. Once it, It'll be in place by the time we, when we do your stuff. It'll be amazing. Amazing stuff. Oh, great. Awesome. Yeah. I'm so psyched. So, right. Doug, uh, what, what was the last movie called again? Return to Zero? Power of Zero. That comes out on the 23rd. Okay. Power of Zero comes out on the 23rd. Motivation Factor is already out there. Fasting is already out there. Speaking of fasting, I am going to be doing a one-hour long um, webinar hey, on April 25th. It's going to be 5.30 Pacific Standard Time with my good friend John Odin. If any of you want any more details about that, hit me up. I'll tell you all about it. It's going to be on fasting for longevity and ultimate, ultimate optimal health. Make sure to um, also get those films that I just talked about with Doug. Stay tuned for the stuff we got coming up in the pipeline. We're, we're collaborating on a project that we're going to be hopefully filmed. Hopefully we'll film it this summer if we can squeeze it in. I know Doug is super busy and I don't want to ask too much of his time. And also take control of your own health and your own destiny. It's funny. Whenever I talk to Doug on Facebook Live, I seem to come back to this last closing statement. Don't be bamboozled or fooled. Always get a second opinion. Be very careful and do your research on who you trust and who you believe in and what products you're going to buy, regardless if they're supplements or if they're FDA approved or not. Always do your research. Go into the weeds. Ask questions. Don't be fooled and don't be bamboozled. You are the master. You are in control of your life and your health and your relationships. Take control of it. Don't let anyone else be the master of your destiny. Remember that. Anything else, got? To say before we close out, Doug? No. Oh, oh, Amazon Amazon just got back to me and they said that fasting is doing extremely oh. well. They want to do all this they are putting it all over that all over the world, all the stuff right now. So I've got oh, I got sweet. they actually emailed me three days ago. I haven't even responded. I need to do that. But um yeah, so yes. so uh, that's awesome. so thank you everybody who's been pushing that. And um, as you know, when I, we made that, we wanted to do it in a way that's timeless. That it's timeless, that, that in a decade mm -hmm. from now, people are gonna go back and say, Wow, it's like it was just made, and yeah. and I, you know, we just showed fast. We just showed it. We didn't. We, it's telling. It's just showing how different approaches people do it. Of course, Kevin is right there, and Kevin, you were so huge in that movie, and um, and Kevin well, is the it. master of the forty-eight hour fast. You are the master <laughs> of the forty-eight hour fast, Kevin. I've, which which I it's I my figured favorite it out. fast. I figured That's it out, my man. favorite fast. There's nothing that kind of like just once yeah. a month, 48 hour fast. I love that thing. Yeah. Well, you know, I've been doing deep research on it. I've been going. I've been. I've been even past the the movie fasting. I mean, all that stuff that I learned there from like all these experts and stuff is one thing. But I've continued that path since you filmed that film two years ago, on on a regular basis. And I mean, I've decided I've aligned myself with all the experts on the top. I mean, just like you have them in your phone which is awesome. I kind of have the same thing going on right now. And I've been attending seminars and workshops. I've been hearing all the latest research from all the experts on fasting. And I just want to share it with the whole wide world. That's what I'm, I'm going to be talking about uh, in my webinar and stuff, a little bit more in detail. But there's even more stuff I keep learning about it uh, as time goes on. And it's like, I do honestly feel like I cracked the code with that monthly 48-hour fast and like doing a, a 16-day protocol in between with two meals a day. I think that sets the stage for the accumulation of benefits every single month. They just keep on climbing and climbing. I've been following that protocol for about two and a half years, and I just feel like I'm getting better and stronger, and like things are just falling into place. I'm so stoked I, about I it. Would like to, I'd like to, to see what, I would like to see what science shows um, how, as it relates to the skin care, mm -hmm. you know, skin yeah. as it relates to a 48-hour fast, because I know that the big discussion has been that we get more benefit the longer we go, like, like uh, the moment we go past 48 hours, that's when we get the autophagy. That's when it's eating the bad skin particles off your skin. And, and so for me, well, I've always done like quarterly a four day water fast. And um, yeah. that has really helped my skin not have the basal cell, uh, you know, skin cancer problem that it's always had. 
Um, I, I am able to go out in the sun. I get a lot of sun exposure every day and mm -hmm. I don't use any sunblock products or anything like that. And I skin looks great. I mean, it's really, it does. Is, is great. It does. So, so mm -hmm. that's, and, and that's, I think has been a big part of it coupled with everything else exercise and eating, but, but I did exercise and I was trying to eat right. If I was still having skin problems, what changed is I did do quarterly quarterly. I do a four day fast. So my question is, can we get the same benefit from a 48 hour fast? Um, well, that's, and that, that's what I've know. been hearing. You know, I've been, the, the thing that I'm hearing most from all of, all of like the scientists and experts is it sounds like they're addressing the, the crowd who is like just getting into fasting, who has 30 pounds overweight, 40 pounds overweight. They have a lot to give and they've got probably a lot of toxicity fl floating through their system. Now you take a guy like me, and I'm not being egotistical in any way, shape, or form when I'm talking about this. But anyone who knows me personally out there watching knows how, how vigilant and how disciplined I am with my diet and with my health. No smoking, no drinking, no eating junk food at 12 o'clock at night. I don't go to Denny's and have uh, pancakes, stacks of pancakes with syrup on them at 12 o'clock at night on Fridays or Saturdays. Even though you can get the benefits from fasting from doing it five days a week and go all out for two days and still get the benefits, I don't do that. I'm seven days a week. If pizza comes in front of my face, I'll either turn my back and won't eat it, I'll get a salad, or, or I'll have like one piece and that's it. I don't cereal eat anything, no pun intended. And I, I keep my diet as clean and tight as I can. And now I'm doing heavily vegan type dieting five days a week and I do animal protein twice. So I have figured out personally how to trigger and keep in balance the pathways in the system. The one trigger that you want to keep under control is mTOR. mTOR is good because if you spike it, it builds lean muscle mass, it maintains it. But if you spike it too much too often, it is a proliferation syndrome that occurs in your body, meaning it causes bad cells to grow as well as good cells. So you'll build muscle and you'll be aesthetically pleasing and all the ladies will shout and go <gasps> and gasp when you take your shirt off in the summertime. However, if you continue that path for a long time down the road, you increase your risk for cancer and all cause mortality. So what I've done is I figured out that if you eat clean all the time, you can hit autophagy faster when you jump into that longer extended fast, which I feel for me is 48 hours. And every single month, if you keep it clean in between those days and you keep on trucking along, I feel you can get those same benefits of a four to five day fast in a reduced amount of time, say two days, 48 hours. Whereas the person who is 40, 50 pounds overweight, who has a toxic lifestyle, cannot tap into those benefits unless they go four or five days. So that, I have not proven that personally. I don't have science on that. Well, I don't well, think you're, the you're not. Have science on you're, it. you're not. You're not. I if am you understand theorizing how you do, here. If you understand <laughs> how you do a study, right, and you're going to do it yeah. on a general population and who your population pools are, um, that would be a very difficult study to actually do on 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 you measuring that stuff right. out, um, and and they're they're really far off even looking at that question. So, yeah. but. I do know this, um, or at least I believe this. When I was filming everybody for that film, and then I talked to you, yeah, I always felt mm -hmm. the way you described where, how you, what you were experiencing during the fast as you're going in, yeah. it seemed to me like you were getting into it faster than the normal person when you stopped eating. Now, I would like to suggest another component of that it might be the fact you only have like four and a half percent. You got broken up. Oh no, where'd you go? <laughs> you got broken up there. Someone tried calling me. Why, why oh. is this? How, how do I make it so, so sorry about that? Oh, you're Someone back. Tried calling you're back. Me. You're back. Someone tried calling you me. Said anyway, the, you have the four main and a half. Four and a half yeah, you have four and a half percent body fat. So maybe that has a factor into how fast wow. it goes. And you are. You I won't go that clean. Little bit. Well, whatever you. I don't know what you are. You're not very high. I might be. Eight, I'm probably like eight or nine percent. <laughs> okay. It's probably eight or sorry nine to, right now. Sorry it's to winter. call you fat, Kevin. It's still winter here. <laughs> no offense. Yes. No offense, no, Doug. So, I promise you. So, so you're. Uh, but the bottom line is, there. I think there are factors like that. There are always factors like that, and we do need to understand our bodies, figure it out. Um, right. I know mm -hmm. that I do benefit from a four-day water fast personally. Still, when that ends, I'll stop. I don't think it ever will, but I, I'll do those. But I love the forty-eight hour. So I'll do a forty-eight hour for sure yeah. every month. It's a quick and then thing. quarterly, yeah. quarterly, I'll do a, a four day. A four um, day. Mm -hmm. And uh, that seems to help me uh, quite a bit. So maybe it's, I'll, it's maybe I'll join me. you in a, in a four day fast, in a four day fast, hey. one of these, one of these runs that you do it on. Just no, I don't know if you I should. <laughs> you, well, if you do, <laughs> you, you do it with Prolon. Well, just do it with Prolon. And then, then that's fine. Well, yeah. Cause you at least, you, you don't need to, 
the water only. You know, what, what is this going to eat? It's going to eat your muscle. You don't have as much fat from no, the chomp hey, on. So it'll here's come the back. It'll come <laughs> chomp back. on. That's hilarious. Like I have little critters in my body chomping on fat. So yeah. I heard something interesting the other day. I was listening to uh, Dr. I want to say it was James Kelly, if I'm not mistaken. I can't remember who it was. And he mentioned how when you do a long, if you do like a, an extended fast, four days, five days, the first two days you, learn, you lose 10 to 15% muscle. The first two days. That's when you have the most catabolization. Afterward, on day three, you start going into protein sparing and you have way less muscle loss for the last few days of the fast. And then he was talking about prolon and fasting mimicking and how um, genius this plan is because you have enough nutrients coming into your system where that, that amount of catab catabolization of muscle is severely reduced, even on day one and two. And he said a lot of people start having issues on day three, and then when they get past the day three point, they, they go uphill. And again, it sounds to me like they're addressing sick people because these, the, the scientists and the doctors who are addressing the crowd are talking to like practitioners. So they're giving well, them information they can use with yeah. their practice of people who come to them who are, who are in pain or who are sick and everything else. But I'm like, I don't have much of a reference point for myself because I, I, with all due respect, I don't mean to sound egotistical again, but I feel like I'm in a different league here, a different league meaning, well, you know, it's doc football, baseball, soccer. And I'm, I'm playing football where all these other people are playing soccer. So it's like a comparison of two non-comparables, almost like apples and oranges together. So, doctor, I, you know, that's doctor, Yeah, Dr. Kelly, he's, he's in my film. Uh, he's mm -hmm. in fasting. He shows up a couple times. And I remember when I talked to him. He told me about a study that was done with mice that demonstrated, again, or rats, it demonstrated that there was less muscle loss on prolon, so a fasting mimicking diet versus right. a pure water fast. Now, I don't know where you're at at the end of the day, two weeks, three weeks later, after, you know, those cells, those muscles are broken down, and then you go through a refeed period, and they all come back. Um, I, you know, those are all interesting questions, but yeah. it is, it is less taxing to your system. Um, right. and, and so I think that there's value. I mean, obviously that there was value. I put the fasting mimicking uh, diet in, in the film. I had included showing that because there are, there's an absolute large chunk of the population that that's the only way they're going to fast ever. That's true. So it, yeah. it definitely has it's a, a great... role. Yeah. And I've done it. Cool. I've done it before. And, um, you know, it uh, definitely takes the edge off. Although, I will say this, that mm -hmm. my body's now to the point that going in, if I go in clean, I've been eating good, and I go into a fast clean, that mm, the best experience for me is actually now, now, right now, the water fast. Um, but I've also noticed that it depends. There, you know, we have an ebb and flow. It's like we got a lot going right. on in our system and our body. So yeah. just because of a great experience this time does not mean – a month will, or three everyone, next quarter right. is going to be good then as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, those are all those are all factors. And then and then also the other statement that you said about breakfast, you know, you don't eat till later. Um, yeah. My system, my body seems to do best when I end earlier. Right. So rather than focus for me, it's so easy for me to go to noon or one. I mean, I went to noon today, um, and um, you know, we went and played. I ran on the beach and did pull ups. They have a pull up bar and dip thing at the beach. Sweet. And went for a swim after. Uh -huh. um, and then um, I know you're talking about snow, and I was like, I just thought about what I did this morning. Um, <laughs> I'm looking so, at it right now, and it's just it's nuking out here. I can barely yeah, see the road. It's like solid yeah, it's white. A little different. That, it's hilarious because I see that green grass behind you. It's I'm just, 80 I degrees today. Track, so I'm, mm, what it's, it, it, the weather's changing. Good. I mean, the water temperature are actually changing 10 degrees for, in one week to the next. This is the transition. It's happening right now, so it's kind of fun. But um, Wow. What I've found Fantastic. is for me, if I could, if I want to make real progress, I'll stop eating before four o'clock. I'm done by four. And then, um, oh, I dude, could if I could, if I could pull that off, I would, I would absolutely choose that for, I would choose that over anything else. If I could eat between like, say nine and four, nine and three, I would do that every day. It's just yeah, like yeah. scheduling is, is rough for me. Yeah. You know, so you could, and... you could have it. You could. So, so the old farm mode where they had a monster eight o'clock breakfast, they'd been up for four hours already. And then they ate again, you know, big lunch about 12 yeah. or one. And then they had a light supper of, you know, maybe a little bread and milk, probably what it was then, but you know, hopefully, you know, we wouldn't do that, but whatever, but very light supper yeah. um, mm -hmm. at five o'clock. And then they just hung out, read, walked, sat down, read, whatever. And then they're asleep by 7.30 or 8 at night. <laughs> so, so. That's a dream, uh, actually. That, if you think about that, it was, it was kind of perfect. Yeah. It's kind of perfect. And, and uh, it was so tied to circadian rhythm, the light, 
what the, what the eyes are seeing by way of light and what the organs are seeing by way of food and organs, um, food makes a bigger impact on our organ circadian rhythm than the light does. That's the big thing that, that, you know, Sachin Panda had discovered at the Salk Institute. Mm -hmm. Right. And, um, and so if you put those two things together and you're able to, you have the, the luxury to build your lifestyle around that, which is healthy. Okay. If you're just staying up all night, you're just watching Netflix crap or you're just watching <laughs> so anything. Watching. I mean, honestly, yeah. if you turn the TV on, the TV is really bad news. Almost in almost any situation, especially that time of day, you shouldn't be sitting. You should be laying down and going to sleep. Get up three in the morning, three thirty in the morning. I mean, I emailed Mark Testa. You do a lot with Mark. He always laughs because you get these emails from me at three thirty in the morning. Like, dude, what are you doing up at three thirty in the morning? <laughs> I don't know. I just, I just woke up. I mean, you know, went to bed, wake up, and what else am I going to do? Just lay around. I often wake up at 3 a.m. too, but it's usually because of stress and anxiety. Oh, no, I'm I can't up wake up at 3. 3 is way too early. 3.30, 3.45. I don't do it on purpose. I, you know, I always aim for 4 to 4.30, but sometimes I wake yeah. up at 3 and I'm just like, oh. And like thoughts just start rolling through my head like, a, you know, squirrels are running around my head all the time. There's like two gerbil wheels in there with squirrels on. I'm going all the yeah. time. I wake up at 3 and my mind just is plagued with thoughts. Then I get anxiety. Then I, then I feel fear. Then I feel depressed. Then I feel like inferior. And I have just one, one negative thought after the next coming through and then i just keep looking at the clock i'm like wait does four o'clock can't come soon enough no you made and then I, like, I get to the gym yeah. i start working out i start spinning my indian clubs and it all goes away indian clubs i think i in a i place guess of peace. I, I just don't think we can overdo well we always can overdo everything we gotta be we do want to be balanced mm -hmm. we want to be safe and not be extreme like extreme is stupid so, so there's yes, got to be some, yes. some, uh, balance. some balance and rational balance training, perfect. rational physical training. You're not going out there the first day. You're going super hardcore. You're like, you know, you haven't been doing anything. You're like, I want to be um, do the Iron Man. I mean, you know, you start going right into training. <laughs> you just, you know, you got you, your muscles can always handle it. Your muscles are always going to handle it, but your joints, your tendons can't. It's going to take a lot longer, and your body can only do what it's going to do. Be very smart because you're trying to go to age hundred. And, and you want to be very active all the way to then. So, mm -hmm. so don't fall for all the crazy extreme stuff. Just, you know, rational training, rational. Yeah. But, but all that being stated, going back to the principles, the foundational principles of lifestyle and looking how humans have always done this when they did it well, when they did it well, and, mm -hmm. and looking at how they did it, there's so much can be learned. And you have to be so purposeful, so driven recreate a life that you can actually do that right now it's so difficult because of everything else that's going on and but when you do when you do and you're getting that light and you're getting everything that's supposed to happen the right way it's amazing how great you feel in the transformation that takes place and people say wow you look so much younger and you all these things happening and you weren't even going for that yeah. but you got it and you don't have to pay for it you don't you're not visiting waste sitting in waiting room <laughs> after waiting room and dealing with all that nonsense and blah. Yeah, or and, any and of that fake fraud we talked about. Fake stuff earlier. you're buying. I mean, you're, you're, you know what you're doing, and you're making good choices and choices that actually work. That, that, uh, um, yeah. So, anyway, that, that's my advice. Well, if, if we could just get people to go back to a little normalcy, I think we would be doing really, really well. Yes, thanks. Thanks, Chris. Um, yeah, thanks, Chris. Thanks for tuning in. Um, yeah, and you know, we were just talking. We just spent a bit. We just got went down a big time rabbit hole. Doug and I do this sometimes. We're about to say, hey, "I'll talk to you later. I got to do something." And then we end up like an hour later, we're still talking about something. But we were talking about the, sticking with the basics and doing just small things and like following a somewhat of a fasting protocol is like one of those things that's just so simple and right in front of you, and it's not that complicated. And I keep coming back to this. And whenever I talk to you or I talk to Mark or usually anyone at all on Facebook. Just start with eating between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. and have three meals with no snacks. Shut the TV down as early as you can at night and go to bed and close your eyes. And don't eat late at night. Don't eat, drink alcohol late at night. Don't drink soda or Pepsi late at night. Don't do anything that's going to disturb your circadian rhythm or your um, hormones or the bacteria in your stomach. Shut it down at 7 o'clock at night. Start it up again at 7 a.m. Or better yet, wait one hour after you wake up in the morning before you start eating and try to space your last meal two hours before you go to bed at night and make sure you have a 12 hour fasting window. If you did something that simple, I mean, that little simple thing can change the nation, Doug. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's yeah. like, no one knows about it. It's like, I was, you know, when I was on that rant earlier, it's like, if people would just listen to common sense, 
It's not that complicated. That is it. That one small thing. It is so easy. Like, I, I would have to force myself to eat in a 12-hour window. After fasting, all the, all the aggressive fasting I've been doing for the past months and years. You'd feel so bad. Be, you'd feel... It would, you I would feel, feel like uh, a blimp, probably. Right, I'm like, right. oh, I feel so. Well, I feel, I feel like I'm cheating or something. Now, yes, I have a, a, a pretty um, intense personality due to my eating disorder in the past and everything, and that's understandable. But if I was to eat three meals in a 12-hour window, I would just feel like, like you said, I'd probably feel like a blimp or something. I should try it one of these days just to see how I feel. You I'd should. Like, I'd feel so I'll, nervous. I'll, I'd be like, I'll come <laughs> document it and show all the crazy results of the like, <laughs> comedic thing. When hey, we, my, my right, when we meet die. up. When we meet up, we'll have to do that. All right, we're All right. Get, we got to wrap it up. Everybody has, we got to get back to work and stuff. Hey, thank you so much, Doug, for joining me today and thank talking you. smack. Make sure to go to DougWorchardFilms.com. Watch all his films. Go to, go to Amazon Prime. Watch Fasting tonight if you haven't done so. And Doug, I will be seeing you next, hopefully uh, sometime around the end of May. We'll talk smack. We'll do some exercise. We'll start getting to work on our next film together. I'm super stoked about that. And if any of you have any questions or comments, hit me up behind the scenes. Make sure to, uh, if you're interested in hitting up my um, webinar, it's coming up April 25th. Um, it's going to be uh, 5.30 Pacific Standard Time. I'll be on the East Coast, so I'll be at 8.30. And if you have any questions for Doug, you know how to find him. If you have any questions for me, you know how to find me. Doug, have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks, bud. Take care. All right. Later, everybody.